Welcome to Deep Tech 315. Our first topic is NVIDIA. This uh, stock has obviously been a monster. If you've been asleep here for the last month and woke up today, the stock is up about 30% over the past month. That compares to the NASDAQ, which is up around 5%. Apple's up kind of 8%, but the rest of the MAG7 is kind of in that uh, 3 to 5% uh, range, more or less. And so we have this just spectacular, feels like the top is kind of getting ready to blow off. Uh, NVIDIA felt like that uh, three months ago, six months ago, a year ago. There wasn't any new news here. We had their product announcements as did AMD and Intel at this Taiwanese conference. We had some, uh, you know, the earnings uh, that went well. And uh, we have XCI raising some money that they've talked about spending those on uh, NVIDIA chips and Elon saying that some of their FSD in Austin's not ready to take these chips. So I'm going to redirect them to XAI. So NVIDIA is constantly in the news, but uh, what's going on to all these pieces really don't uh, seem to add up to this breakout unless it's just about the bigger picture. I think it is about the bigger picture. And, you know, you think of, booms like this technologically driven booms and we have a recent one with the internet so it's kind of fresh still in a lot of people's minds where you say look at what happened to cisco you know same thing stock went vertical into the internet build and then just crashed down because it couldn't keep up its momentum and what i haven't heard a lot of people say even though we hear that comparison a lot i haven't heard a lot of people ask the question well what is the demand for incremental intelligence in the world what do you mean and, by that? Demand for incremental, just like progress inching towards no, artificial I general mean, intelligence? If, if we've created intelligence through machines. Which we are. Whether we say it's artificial general, which is equivalent to humans, not equivalent to humans. I actually think that's sort of irrelevant. That's sort of this nuance that doesn't matter. Have we created intelligence that can create value in the world, build value in the world? What is the demand for incremental intelligence in the world? I think the demand for it is probably really high. And yeah. the point that I try to make is instead of saying, well, look at what happened with Cisco, look at what happened with the internet, there was this overbuild. I think the, the better question is, well, what if AI is as profound as so many of us think it will be? Why wouldn't the company that is literally creating the brains for the intelligence right. be one of, if not the most valuable company in the world? Isn't, isn't that kind of logical? It's logical. And I'm a fan of what NVIDIA has done and what they're doing. I believe in their competitive advantage and their emotes. And so it's all that's logical. I think it begs the question of the boom and the bust. I mean, this is a year ago in their April quarter, NVIDIA's business was down 13%. And since then, it's kind of running at a 250% clip. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to answer your question, I I think it's Everyone agrees this is going to be great. I think everyone would agree that the incremental intelligence piece is there's no way to satisfy that. Humans will always want more intelligence. And uh, I think the question comes down to is, is there just going to be like a second derivative that kicks in here where you go from 30% growth to 20% to 15 off of some huge numbers and it just isn't as exciting of a story? Yeah. Not, well, I want to frame that in too, because I think that that's, that's an important point. And there's, there's two angles to it that I think about. One is right now, I just looked at it this morning, NVIDIA trades 33 times forward earnings. So it's actually the second most expensive of the MAG7 or MAG6. It's probably going to grow. This is on 25 numbers. On 25, 25 numbers. So it has whatever consensus growth is built in there. And maybe consensus mm -hmm. is still short. But let's just say that that's right. It's 33 times. Um, you know, Apple is high 20s, Microsoft is 31, Amazon's a little under 40. So Amazon is still more expensive than NVIDIA on that metric. And Amazon has always been one that's traded at a very high earnings multiple. But when you put it in that context, that doesn't seem that crazy. And when I think about it even further, and this is not meant to be a needle at Apple, but Apple hasn't really grown top line that much the last couple of years. And it's sustained, you know, about a 30 times forward multiple. So I kind of would ask, okay, fine. Let's say NVIDIA flatlines in a year or two. Right. 
Do we think the multiple goes back to 20? I don't think it probably does. I don't think that would make sense. Probably not. And, and the other thing I would say just about multiples, and this was actually surprising to me, if you look at that forward multiple, 33 for NVIDIA right now, uh, it is cheaper than Uber. It's cheaper than Palantir. It's <laughs> cheaper than Amazon. It's cheaper than Costco. It's cheaper than Chipotle. There's a lot of companies that trade at a much higher multiple than NVIDIA does. And that doesn't mean that they can keep up right. this growth. I'm not saying that that's possible, but I am saying that look out at some of these other companies in the market. Maybe they're drastically overvalued too. That's fair. But I think to just look at NVIDIA in a vacuum and say, wow, this thing's crazy. Look at the chart. It's a hockey right. stick. The multiple's going up. That's not fair in the context of a lot of these other companies who don't have the AI catalyst that NVIDIA does. It, it just comes down to the question of higher or longer. If it, they ultimately end up growing faster, because that's the reason. The reason why this incredible company trades at those surprisingly low valuations is that there's a lot of scar tissue around this for investors who have been around this for a long time that have a lot of dough to put into this company, and they have a concern that something's going to slow. If they didn't have that concern, this would be trading at a 60 multiple. And mm -hmm. so I think that uh, that really was, I mean, that's the magic of investing is, uh, is this going to grow faster than what people think? So we're going to jump to our second topic, which is our final preview on WWDC. I'll just kind of sum up where most people are gravitating towards is that the big announcement is related to Siri. Uh, this also a uh, potential partnership, likely partnership with OpenAI. It could be G Google and uh, Gemini, but essentially covering a lot of lost ground that they've had over the past few years and really injecting AI throughout their products in a short amount of time. And then as part of that, just kind of bringing both the Mac OS, probably the biggest update in the Mac OS in like 40 years going from really hasn't changed much from the mouse on, on desktop and this adding AI to it. And of course, adding AI to iOS. And so kind of uh, putting all this together, my sense was the biggest news is Siri. And that may seem like a surprise, but Siri is going to be the window that I think a lot of people are going to experience generative AI through. And Apple has this kind of unique angle by having all these devices that even though people are scarred about using Siri, it just feels like an opportunity for people to try it again and and uh, just uh, get a new fresh look to uh, using generative AI. And I'd be curious, what was your kind of, that's my pressure point. I love pressure points. That's my pressure point going into this. What's Siri going to look like? I'm curious, what's your, what are you focused on? I think that's the right thing too. And I think it's, it, it's expectations management. You know, I, I think that we will get a step forward for Apple and what they're doing with AI. I mean, anything is a step forward because they've been so quiet about it so far, but I don't expect a revolutionary product announcement. I think if that is the bar, right. then things might be disappointing. The wild card to me though, is you, you mentioned By the way, this, let, me stop, let me pause you there. Yeah. The stock's up 8% in the last month. I mentioned with the NASDAQ's done, call it up 5%. Is is your sense that the market's actually looking for some sort of a breakthrough or just essentially integrating all the goodness that we've heard about over the past year and a half? I think it's probably more of the latter. And I think that stock move, part of it, I think, was Apple was probably unfairly beaten up, uh, mm -hmm. maybe relative to some of the other mega caps in, in the space. I mean, obviously, I think even with that 8% move, I think Apple's still on kind of the bottom in terms of year-to-date performance for, for the megas. Um, so I think part of it, probably a little bit of reversion to the mean too. But but what I was going to say about Siri, you made the point that there's scar tissue there. And I actually wonder, Wildcard, you know, do they change the Siri brand? Do they move <laughs> away from Siri? Because I think so many people have this negative, like I have a negative connotation with Siri. When Siri starts talking yeah. on my phone, I get annoyed. I don't want to hear it. I don't want Siri. Um, and I wonder if there's too much of yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be a good call. I like maybe it. They, yeah, maybe they Just call tear it the something else. Off. Yeah, we'll see. I'd say the odds are probably less than 50%, but that would be table. interesting if they did that move. That's that's fun stuff. Uh, we talked uh, last week about the you know the economic relationship between OpenAI and Apple. And I would just kind of uh, have an evolving view about how Apple is impacted by this. You know, the substance of a lot of the products that Microsoft has, that Amazon has, that Apple will have in the near term is going to be based on third parties, whether it's through partnerships with Google and Tropic or with OpenAI. And it, I, I, I just want to uh, let the record state my opinion here is that I think that 
really the soul of these companies is going to be in someone else's hands, probably in Apple's case for the next one to three years. And then I think that they will continue to come out with small language models. They have this Ajax and I think that they can potentially come out with a large language model and start to kind of wean themselves off. And I'm curious, I like that view because it gives Apple its destiny, I think, back in its own control. What's the reality of Apple three years from now having a model that could displace whoever they do the partnership with next week? Apple Maps versus Google Maps is the first thing that comes to mind. Can they build a large Painful language it. model? Yes. Will it be nearly as good as Google's or OpenAI's? I highly doubt it, just like we see in Maps for the same exact reason, which is Google Maps has more resources, it has more information, it has more data, and it's a better product. And I think that Apple will run into the same problem if they try to really build its own large language model and go head to head with those superior products cautionary tale. We'll leave it there. Our final topic is this has kind of been sneaking up on us, no pun intended here, but the autonomous vehicle, this 2024, the year of the robo taxi. And um, Bloomberg did a nice piece today about Zeus. This is a company that Amazon acquired four years ago. They're launching a robo taxi in Las Vegas. I feel like everybody wants to test their Robo taxis in Las Vegas. It actually does go more normal speeds. I think that's like 30, 40 miles an hour. And the, uh, you know, that it kind of reminds there's just a lot of negative headlines around autonomy kind of late last year with Ford exiting Argo, with what happened with Cruise in San Francisco. They've kind of retreated to uh, Phoenix and there's another city there. But like quietly with what's going on with, Tesla and their August 8th day. And then what we got, what's going on with Amazon that I mentioned, it's like, this is kind of like moving forward. Yeah. Low key. It kind of feels like it's, it's been a year of, of progress on driverless autonomy. Um, even though the big story has been large language models. I mean, the big story has been sort of the big brother, I guess, to, to mm -hmm. autonomy in the auto space, but it still feels like, you know, we're making this progress. We're making these steps. And in some ways, I think it's a good thing that, you know, broader AI, these large, large language models, ChatGPT have maybe taken some of the spotlight away from the self-driving thing, because I think self-driving was kind of like the headline AI thing for mm -hmm. the last couple of years. We didn't have ChatGPT two years ago, and we were sort of front and yep. center with, you know, driverless cars, the testing, like you mentioned, Cruise and some of the things that have not worked. Uber, if you remember that story from... Oh, yeah. From what was that called? Half years X ago. Division X or something? I forget. But I forget what they called um, it. Yeah. But, do you think we're going to have it's a? Been, it's been progress that's been good, and I think we're seeing these companies continue to move forward. I think I think it's still going to take time, but they're not dying and going away, which is good. And on this question, do you think that autonomy will have? And uh, I'll give you the final word. I'll answer first. And give you the final word. Will autonomy have a GPT breakthrough moment? I believe yes. I believe all the underpinnings of what's going on with computer vision that's powering autonomy has the opportunity to have a, a breakthrough moment. What's your timing on the breakthrough moment? Two years. Two years. Two years. I take the over. I mean, I, I think the answer is yes too, but I'll stick with my my uh, statement, which is I still think this is further away than we want or think, and I would say it's probably more like four years away. Okay, but it will be like a breakthrough moment. I think Kinda there like, will be a moment where people say, wow, this, this is actually way better than I thought. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what that, that'll look like because we've already seen Tesla with FSD. Like right. there are I these think products. You could the argue that's the thing that's, you, you could argue it has, but it, it I, doesn't feel like it's captured the, it hasn't uh, captured the imagination people's like ChatGPT has yet. So totally you start agree. seeing it on like your rural roads. Yeah. I think that's where it's, it's a big hard where you can't just go and jump in. You can just go and pull up a browser and jump in GPT. You can't really do that with autonomy. So there's some, uh, to say there's adoption friction is an understatement. Uh, can't wait for August 8th and I can't wait for next week, our next episode on behalf of deep tech. Bye for now.